Hi, my name is Michael Dell. I'm a Gunawage Rono living with special needs. When I was interviewed, I had an idea for a show for people from Gunawage living with disabilities. Today is the start of that show, Walk in My World. Often, people with disabilities lead sheltered lives and their interactions are limited to caregivers and family members. I hope this show will bring you awareness of these people, their families, their lives, and their dreams for the future. Welcome back to Walk in My World. I hope everybody had a good holiday season. Today we are going to be de dealing with a little different topic. If you've watched um, Walk in My World in the past, we've dealt with physical disabilities in previous episodes. For this episode of Walk in My World, we are going to be tackling the topic of mental illness. And we have two uh, experts, Johnny Mio and Joe Baltempo from KSCS, who will give us some background on what mental illness is. So welcome, guys, and thank you for doing the show today. Thank you for having us. I guess my first question, uh, to do, to do with this topic today. Um, what is the politically correct term to describe what we will be talking about today? Uh, actually, that's a very good question to start off with because uh, a lot of people use uh, different names. Essentially, uh, the words uh, mental illness refers to uh, a sort of a, a catch-all for all uh, diagnoses that are made uh, by psychiatry. In this uh, term uh, are also what we like to call as psychologists, um, our uh, psychological conditions. Adding to Joe, uh, what Joe's been saying, uh, I think over the years and the course of uh, diagnosis and medical terms and, and medical technology continues to change uh, endless, every day something new is found, something new they work at. So, so kind of the names change, and I, I think education is a big piece that we lack. We lack because we, we think mental illness is something that, you know, we've seen on TV and, you know, we classify it with a, a word that's kind of demeaning, you know, putting somebody down that they're, they're below uh, whatever normal is. Can you describe uh, different types of mental illness? And what they are? Yes. Uh, maybe uh, just as a preamble to that, just before that, I can, uh, most people, like John was mentioning here, uh, is uh, the question of what is not normal. Yeah. Uh, for example, these are behaviors that are considered like uh, seeing things or hearing things that are not there. Uh, these are very unusual types of behaviors. Um, and considered one of the signs. It doesn't mean that uh, you have a psychiatric uh, disorder, but these are one of the signs. The other sign is behavior that is socially unacceptable or that it violates the, uh, what so the society generally accepts. So harming others, harming yourself, or uh, thinking uh, in a way that's paranoid. That's the second one. And then there's third, which is Really an important one, the perception of reality uh, is, is faulty. In other words, it's a, it's, it's a mistake, mistaken. So for example, the perception of reality might be like hallucinations. Uh, you see things or hear things that are not there. Or delusions, the belief systems that uh, are not really based in rea any reality. Or the ideas of what we call ideas of being followed or persecution. Um, the other uh, significant behaviors that we consider uh, not normal is when a person goes through a significant personal distress. A uh, person has an unusual experience with uh, fear, anxiety, depression. Uh, this can be another sign of uh, personal distress. Um, fifth. Uh, is uh, kind of uh, self-defeating behavior that, for example, if you have agoraphobia or a fear of open spaces, fear of closed spaces, well, you don't, uh, you don't go into those areas. Uh, so you're defeating your, or limiting yourself uh, or part of your life. And the last one is uh, that 
uh, is considered universal is uh, behavior that's dangerous. So uh, where you put others in harm's way. So these are six areas that we consider, uh, you know, reasons for uh, either consulting a psychiatrist um, or, or a psychologist. On your last question, of, uh, you, you, you were saying that uh, if somebody uh, is like the, depressed or something, how long do they? How long should they wait uh, okay. be, before uh, seeking help? If they may be just. Uh, it may just be one day. That's nothing. Two days. That's nothing. Right. But if they notice they're really slipping into uh, deeper depression. Deeper depression. Uh, yeah. How can they identify? I may need help. Okay. What, uh, that's a very good question because uh, what is important here in uh, all the behaviors that I mentioned is somehow the, the, the sort of the measuring stick is how much or when does it start to interfere with your regular functioning. Yeah. Okay. And that's one of the first, first questions that you know, we're going to be asking about. Generally speaking, if you're feeling like uh, very, very low mood and it persists day in, day out for over two weeks, um, then you should be consulting with someone. But uh, just to answer the types of mental health issues uh, that we can uh, relate to, uh, in general, there's three types, large types, the mood, what we call the mood disorders uh, or mood problems, everything related to uh, depression uh, as well as anxiety. Uh, um, and the various types like uh, bipolar or dysthymia and so on and so forth. The other major area are thought problems. Um, these are uh, belief systems that are uh, either of a, you know, a delusional type or uh, ways of thinking that are uh, very bizarre and unusual uh, and don't fit with the reality and lead to some kind of uh, loss of control or contact with reality. So these we call the thought problems. And then there's the last one, which is the psychotic, uh, psychotic episodes or periods of time where a person is in crisis, which may last, uh, it may start off very, very, very slowly and then build up into a full-blown crisis in which that person has lost control over themselves and, and needs uh, support and intervention uh, to get attention, medical attention primarily. And, and the psychotic episode is what we tend to see that stands out. When somebody is going through an episode, uh, depending on where the individual is, what's happening, uh, people, that turns into a fear factor because they're not aware of what's happening. So the episode is scaring a lot of people. So what, what are the uh, exact, exact behaviors to look for? Well, it all depends. Uh, I mean, we, we view what is normal, okay? So uh, you would see an individual walking into the post office, saying hi to people and going to the post office. Well, somebody who's going through a psychotic episode uh, loses control uh, of their thoughts, okay. of, of, their, of the energy inside them. Now, it doesn't last forever. People think that, oh, well, you have a mental illness, so you're always gonna be having episodes. Well, depending on the type of illness, medication depending on the services that determines kind of the episode and and there's no way of saying well today's monday i'm gonna have an episode i think i'll have one wednesday no it doesn't work that way out of the blue it may just creep up to you and bang it happens usually uh it starts uh, it's it's very uh, as we call it very insidious uh, it's uh it starts off with a little thing and then it, it kind of escalates but let's say talking about uh, somebody coming into the post office, maybe uh, all of a sudden talking to themselves or talking to people they don't know and becoming aggressive. Okay, so that's considered um, unacceptable so, behavior. So, so you, those, those are some of the early signs. Like you just said, okay, you're walking into the post office, somebody has uh, an episode. Is it okay to approach them, to ask them uh, what's wrong? Can I help you? Can I approach? You? Can I direct you to, to the right place? Being that we're in in the same building. Yes, I I, I think it's important because uh, as human beings, we we always have right. that tendency to help people, and it's like, 
hi, can I help you? I mean, I've done it to people I don't even know. Okay. I, I meet people in a mall, and all of a sudden there's something going on a little bit, and it's like, excuse me, can I help you? If they tell you flat out no, well, then you back off. You know, the question is, uh, once you're starting to get in their space, if they tell you stop or get out, just get out. Get out and, and maybe uh, call a friend, call a family member, call the mom, the dad, the brother, call somebody in the family and say, look, I just saw this, maybe you should follow up a little bit on it.